Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 2nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan today took a look at a recent HTML phishing attempt. HTML phishing usually refers to where you have the entire phishing page included in the email. That, of course, does make the phishing attempt a little bit easier in terms of not having to direct the user to an actual malicious web page. However, the data still has to get to the attacker and typically it was pretty easy to figure out where the data went. You just looked at the HTML, you looked at the form, maybe there was some JavaScript that picked up the keystrokes and then send them to a specific URL. But well, even these fairly simple sort of low-end phishing campaigns are using obfuscation now. And Jan did take a look at a recent attempt here and the obfuscation being used in that email that makes it a little bit more difficult to figure out where the data ends up. But of course, a JavaScript debugger and the right breakpoints will very easily tell you where the data is going. And by the way, Jan will also be speaking at Sans Fire mid-July. We'll have the conference and a link to it will be in the show notes. And then just a quick update on the Folina vulnerability MSMSDT or CVE 2022-30190. Still no patch from Microsoft, but there is now an unofficial patch from Zero Patch. Zero Patch, a company that specializes in creating these micro patches, as they call it, and they released a free patch for this vulnerability. Not sure if it's worth the risk, really, given that there is a workaround and probably applying the workaround is about as hard as rolling out uh, this unofficial patch and your chances of any issues are probably lower with the workaround once the real patch comes out. There are also multiple reports of the vulnerability being exploited in the wild now. Nothing really sort of uh, rapidly evolving, like not lots and lots of emails with malicious documents, but uh, certainly quite a few sort of anecdotal reports of the vulnerability being exploited. And now with uh, attackers and researchers uh, taking a closer look at these URI protocol handlers, there is a second protocol handler that sort of has caught people's attention and that's Microsoft Search or Search-MS. The end result is that a malicious office document may open an arbitrary web page in your browser, which of course then could launch additional malicious code against your browser. Overall, far from the same seriousness as Folina, but still uh, something uh, to be aware of. And according to a LinkedIn post by Raul Sassi, the CEO of CloudSec, uh, there is an interesting scam going around in order to steal users' WhatsApp accounts. The trick is really sort of a little bit reminiscent of SIM swapping, but well, without actually doing SIM swapping. Instead, the attacker social engineers the victim to forward their phone number to the attacker's phone number. And the way this usually works is that the attacker calls the victim and then under some pretense is basically asking the victim to dial star star six seven star, which is the prefix uh, to forward all calls, followed by a 10 digit number that of course is owned by the attacker. There are a couple different variations of this depending on how the forwarding is exactly set up, but the end result is that the victim's phone calls are being forwarded to the attacker and with that uh, the attacker is able to complete the confirmation of the phone number and steal login credentials or accounts with WhatsApp. I imagine that this will work with a number of similar servers as well, and it's not necessarily just limited uh, to WhatsApp. Well, in the best uh, cryptographic algorithms can be defeated by bad implementations or bad choice when it comes to the keys. RSA is uh, no exception here. And an interesting uh, blog post here outlines how an 
pretty old and uh, basic actually vulnerability in RSA has been used in order uh, to uh, factor keys being used by Fuji Xerox and uh, Canon uh, printers. Of course, the RSA algorithm is based on the fact that it's difficult to factor large numbers into their uh, prime numbers. Well, uh, there are exceptions where some large numbers can be formatted quite easily. And uh, one of uh, these exceptions is known as the Fermat attack after mathematician Fermat who discovered this in the 1600s. So pretty old issue, but still relevant, and the respective printer companies have released patches. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening, and talk to you again tomorrow.